Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Jason, and today I have a playthrough of Planetarium. Planetarium is a family weight strategy game for one to four players, which transports players to the beginning of the cosmos. This star has just birthed all of the matter that is going to exist in the solar system, and over the course of the game, the players are going to coalesce all these matter tokens into planets. So I'm going to show you uh, the rules for the multiplayer game and then the rules for the solo game. And then I'll do a full playthrough for the solo game of Planetarium. So uh, before I do so, I'll go ahead and invite you to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, One Stop Co-op Shop is all over the place. Uh, podcast, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, please go ahead and sign up. Uh, we would love to have you join our community. So without further ado, let's go to videotape and let me go through the rules explanation for Planetarium. All right, welcome to a game fully laid out of Planetarium. So uh, this is a game with a very grandiose theme. So it's very, um, so you have the star right over here, which is a newly formed star, and it is kind of gathering, coalescing into an actual solar system. So there are worlds over here, kind of protoplanets, A, B, C, D, and you are going to be evolving them. Uh, over time. So the players are collectively going to, um, you know, do things like, uh, you know, give it some rapid climate change and establish a stable climate, uh, throw some super volcano on there. So all of these are going to be kind of played alongside um, the planets as um, kind of evolutions of the planets. Uh, and um, towards the, you just gonna keep on doing that. And at the end of the game, whoever is the most impactful uh, of the evolutionizers, I guess that's a word, uh, will win the game. Okay, so how does that all work? So um, I think the important to note, thing to note, so important thing to note is that uh, no one person owns a planet. The you Everybody's in charge of the entire solar system. So like if I wanted to move either planet D, which is right over here, I wanted to move planet A, then I can do so. Uh, so I have my own personal player board in which I'm going to be kind of evolving my own little piece of all four planets. So, um, you know, I kind of have to kind of take in the whole board and strategize your moves that way. So let's say uh, I wanted to play rapid climate change on planet A. That's one of, that's one of the things that I want to do. On my turn, uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I am going to move the planet. I can only move it clockwise. Uh, due to, you know, interplanetary physics. I'm going to get my token and I'm going to put it on my personal board. Uh, that is my entire turn. You get to do one move of one of the planets A, B, C, or D. Uh, also, in addition to that, so let's say on another turn, uh, because according to rapid climate change, I need a water and a gas element. Uh, I can also move the gases and I can move them one turn or uh, one space. So like I can move them on the thick line or the thin line. And then I would claim that as A. So let me go ahead and zoom that back out. So that was my second turn. Uh, I now have the prerequisite. So as the, the second part of my turn, I can say I play rapid climate change, put it on A. Uh, that should be uh, hostile right there. All the planets start as hostile. Uh, I'm going to discard the tokens, but I'm going to discard them on the evolution track. Uh, so that is kind of the timer of the game as the cosmos empties out of matter and it gets kind of pulled into the planets. Then, you know, the game kind of speeds up and eventually uh, the last token that hits this space is going to trigger the end game. Let me go ahead and progress the game state a little bit, show you a couple more things. So I have fast forwarded the game state a little bit to show you a couple more things. Uh, notice how the matter track has been filled uh, and we are around the bend, about to uh, end the game in a short order. Uh, and there are more cards next to the planet. So let me go ahead and zoom in on the story of planet A. So planet A, as you saw, experienced rapid climate change. Uh, it also had a major seismic event, which apparently unleashed tidal forces. Uh, so you see the cubes. The cubes are ownership tokens. So yellow player has played these evolutions. Uh, and the red player has played this evolution. And as you can see... Uh, on the score track, uh, they have gotten credit uh, as we have played those cards. So let's just say that uh, one of the players has played one of their cards. So I'm going to take one of these tokens and I'm going to put it on this space, 
Hard to see from this distance, but this is the fast forward space. Uh, now the matter tokens are going to move, uh, be able to move two. So this will be able to move one, two. Let's say there was a planet right over here, be able to move one, two. You'll be able to claim them a little bit easier. So the game kind of definitely speeds up. Uh, you definitely get a sense of bitty 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 bitty. <laughs> uh, like in the planetarium when you know everything got, kind of gets faster and faster. More cards are going to get played when the last turn uh, gets triggered. You are going to be able to play final evolution card. So uh, these cards, um, uh, these two cards, high evolution, low evolution, that goes throughout the game. You, those are now useless. And you want to play these cards. So uh, they're basically kind of satisfying preconditions. So if I wanted a super earth, it would have to be a non-ring planet in rings of uh, six through or five, what is that, four through five of terrible Roman numerals. So it would have to be, you know, kind of planet A, which is over here. Uh, and it would have to be, uh, I would have to have ownership of it. I do, uh, so I would get credit for five points, just like that. Uh, so you have also cars that are a little bit harder to achieve. So this would have to be a habitable world. Notice that there is a hospital habitable token, and you make a world habitable by playing these cards and make sure that they outnumber the hostile cards, which have a gray border. Spend resources and have a planet of your own that you own on that particular, or have an evolution that you're responsible for on that world. Uh, so you can play as many evolution cards as you want uh, over uh, the course of that last turn. So that's the basics of how you play Planetarium, the base game. Very quickly, let me show you how the solo mode works. Uh, the solo mode is basically the game. <laughs> play the game, do the things, you know, play your, uh, your evolution cards, evolve the planets, move the things around, all that good stuff. Um, what you're competing against is a, I guess a high score, but with feedback. So uh, here's my high score. I'm going to play against the red player or the red tokens, and it's set to 100. So that's perfectly fine. Um, it's going to roll after every time I go. It's going to roll 2d6. The game does not come with 2d6. Uh, go find your own. So then you roll. And then uh, so here would be a result of four. So then every planet within that fourth ring is going to move and acquire a token. So then A and B would move, and then they would place that on the evolution track. Uh, anything, so like if it, if, uh, it rolled a seven, all the planets would move, and it, they would add tokens on the track. Uh, if it rolled anything like a 10 or eight or above or anything like that, then, they, then no movement would happen. Um, so whenever a token appears in the track, the score is lowered by two. So uh, if I have two tokens in the track, all of a sudden now I have to match 96. So... Uh, the effect is that if I roll high a lot, uh, you know, then the planets don't move. I roll like, you know, eights and nines and tens, and there's not a lot of tokens on the track and I have a lot of time to go, then I have to beat a high score. So beating 96 in the base game is just like impossible. That means that this never moved. <laughs> However, if I'm rolling low, if I'm rolling, you know, twos and threes and fours, then planets are moving all of the time, then the score is going to lower. The game is faster. Um, so I have to change my strategy to kind of like score quickly and I can't save up for those big planets. I have to kind of score quickly and get, and meet that lower score threshold. All right. I am ready to just begin the solo playthrough. Um, I've zoomed in a little bit so you can, uh, see the entire board, my player board, which I put over to the side over here in the decks. Uh, so check out my opening hand of five cards. Okay, I have some low evolution. I also uh, have I have a lot of rocky planets, so I think I'm going to be uh, focusing on planets A and B, which are the rocky planets. Uh, and I also have the super volcano, which would get me a, a spare resource. So I think I want to go for that one first. All right, so let us go for the super volcano, and I'm going to focus on planet B over here. Uh, I have a good. A mix of resources available over there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take this air token and move it towards B, kind of uh, executing that gravity, and then put that on my personal player board. All right. So let's see what the dice do to me. Five. Five is a. It's all the. It's all the planets except for this one. D is just hanging out way out here, like Pluto. <laughs> which I know is not a real planet. <laughs> it was a planet when I was growing up, no longer. Um, but D is all the way out here, and then the rest of these move. So that is not a great start for me. Okay, kind of 
at the beginning kind of add on jump street kind of tells me that i'm gonna have to rush it <laughs> a little bit uh so hopefully this super volcano uh does something for me so actually i should have done this before uh, what i'm gonna do is uh, and i plan to do this anyway um not cheating at all uh this is a very expensive card and i don't think i'm gonna get to all this so i'm just gonna discard that uh, as my card play for the turn this happened before i rolled i, pro I promised people i was gonna do it <laughs> i'm gonna discard that pick up i can pick up any one of these four decks i'm gonna pick up a, a small evolution wow that's just easy uh we'll see if that comes into play okay uh all right so i had a plan i'm gonna stick with that plan uh, i don't think that too much has changed so i am going to move b and acquire a water token there you go so I uh, have a couple of options in order to be able to pick up the earth token that I need hopefully the bot doesn't move B out of the way all right that's a low roll but darn it <laughs> it's in uh, ring B so B does move that's terrible for me and also A moves. Okay, so B and that those uh, matter tokens disappear. Uh, what I should have been doing is I should have been lowering the score threshold for the bot. So now uh, minus two points to the threshold for every face down token, which gets me uh, now I have to hit 90 points uh, in order to win. All right. Hmm. So I think I want to continue to focus on. Uh, the rocky planets a and b um i don't have a way so just to kind of talk you through my thinking a little bit i don't really have a way to make a planet um habitable so if you look at a over here you can make a planet habitable they all start as hostile uh, a planet needs to be habitable in order to fulfill this so hmm they're all hostile. This would be green if it was habitable. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay. So what I will do is I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it messed me up on B. Uh, let <laughs> It'll probably move again. So I'm just going to uh, go for this one. So major seismic event on A. So then A is right here. I'm going to move. I'm going to sweep him out uh, so he doesn't move as often, hopefully. That is a rock token, and actually that's going to go right on here, and I'm going to take that major event and play it, or major seismic event, and play it. Okay, major seismic event has been played. Um, the ownership token is probably not as important in solo, but when the final evolution, uh, if you notice that the last requirement is always to take a token off, uh, I can't. I have to have a token on the card in order to be able to play it. Uh, so if I had um, a one planet that had multiple cards, I can't just like score off the prereqs. I have to have like one card per uh, final evolution card I score, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, feel, I have a feeling it's going to be a really fast game, so I think I'm going to want to score quickly. Uh, so let's go get another low evolution. I really want ones that chain, uh, and I'm not getting them. So, uh, But I did get the living planet so i think i'm going to make b a living planet uh if i can so uh all right so but bot good 12 uh, doesn't do nothing good uh, <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> all right uh so b still needs some rocks uh b is that is not where uh, I need to be for B because if you notice, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, the lines that connect to B right now uh, do not connect to any rock, whether it's behind or in front. So uh, I don't really have any options to get rock on B. Okay. So, um... So I, I did want to try to get that super volcano going, and that would have been on B. Um, let's make a planet living, okay? Uh, and I have to make I have to make B living. It needs a rock, uh, but it also needs metal. So what I'm going to do is looking forward, I'm going to move B over here, 
and just have metal hanging out because B is going to be my metal planet. All right, let's see what the bot does to me. 10, wow, okay, so it <laughs> started off hairy uh, for a little while there, but I think that uh, the board is kind of calming down a little bit. Great, so now I could take this matter token, another reason why I swept them out, I can move it towards B, and the matter token is there, so now I get to do, all right, uh, so the card that I've chosen to play on B is Hypro Thermal Vents. Uh, I wanna make a living to satisfy that one final evolution card I have, so I pay, and I'll see that when I go back to the top. I'll go ahead and move that. So the hydrothermal vents apparently spurred the uh, the birth of water. <laughs> is that how that works? I'll, I'll take your word for it, card. Uh, and that is now a living planet. So that did slow me down on the super volcano, but I think it was worth it. So um, I'm gonna take these two matter tokens, I'm gonna place them here. I'm gonna get another card. Um, I have two low evolution cards. Hmm game kind of gave me a break a little bit on everything that it's doing so let me go for a high why not <laughs> I may completely regret this but we'll see uh, actually uh, not terrible uh, these are these are kind of common elements and if I need to I can bail and it has a, uh, a green so if in case I need to make a planet um, more lifelike I have an option there okay bot don't don't mess with me too much uh yes <laughs> actually wait i i moved b out of there so it only moves a that's pretty good a is now face down and the score threshold lowers by another two just as a reminder i have six tokens over here uh so minus 12 minus two points per uh my score threshold is now 88. all right uh let us continue to stack a and b uh, I was working on that small volcano for B, so um, I need more rock. So I'm going to, uh, hmm, gets my better judgment. I'm going to move it back in. How often am I going to roll a three on the bot, huh? <laughs> have rock. I have plenty of uh, access to lots of different uh, elements over here. So we're just going to move that over there. All right. Uh, so I have a. Uh, Mm, I'm going to hold on to Oceans for now. Uh, this is the card I could have discarded, but... Uh, you know what? Nah, I'll hold on to it. See what happens. Six. That is most of the planets. Uh, the only planet that does not move is like uh, Pluto out here. Is Pluto a planet anymore? <laughs> it was a planet when I was a kid. Uh, it's definitely... Uh, I don't think it is a planet anymore. So, But the, everything else does move. So that's not a good thing. So... I think all in all, this is going to be a pretty quick game so that uh, the planets, I don't know if I explained this in the walkthrough, but actually actually keep on going until they hit matter. Uh, matter is attracted to matter. So that's why they're all over there. All right. Uh, so B needs some water. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take water uh, and uh, make it collide into planet B. Uh, which lets me play Super Volcano. Okay, Super Volcano is over here. Uh, so I will, when I get there, when I get back to it, pay the resource cost. But right now I have, well, the hyperthermal vents apparently uh, <laughs> access the magma core. That's a little bit, it makes a little bit more sense to me uh, how hyperthermal vents can, uh, can explode a Super Volcano. All right, so I can, one, two, three. Get three of these tokens, put them on the track, getting close uh, to that uh, marker of the end game where it gets faster and faster. Uh, gonna draw a world, and I'm probably I'm gonna draw a low evolution. Uh, so actually, that's pretty good. So like, it's a pretty reasonable cost, and this will get me another uh, resource back when I proc it. So that's actually a pretty good thing. Um, Okay, so I think Oceans is going to bite the dust. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I have to roll for bot. Oh, wait, I, I haven't kept track of my score. So I have 7 plus 5 is 12. I should have 15 total points. Uh, and the bot should be at there, 82. Uh, so minus 18 
for the track. So uh, just kind of make sure I keep uh, a running total of what's going on. Five. <laughs> not great, not great, guys. Uh, so actually, well, it doesn't really matter. The, the planets move through each other. Kind of play leapfrog over here. D moves over here. Wow. Um, not great. Wow, it's uh, I'm really getting close to the end. Uh, one thing I did forget to do for Super Volcano was attract a matter token. I'm going to attract a uh, metal to fulfill the condition on Nutrient Rich World. So uh, I now have a mid position to score that 12 points for B being up there. Okay. Uh, wow. Not a lot of great options. I think uh, with everything going on, I need to just score. <laughs> uh, so A is not really in a position to score. And if you notice, this is all like hollowed out. But let's move A over here. Let's get some water and I can immediately cash that in for this card, Sulfur Dioxide Vents. So apparently the major seismic event on A, uh, which formed the crack, uh, on planet B it unleashed life, on planet A it unleashes Sulfur Dioxide, which even I know. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> who's who's going to live in that, you know? Uh, all right, so that goes over here. I get an ownership token. There we go. Okay, so I need to pay for that. Goes right there. I get to pull a card. Uh, the card that I'm going to pull is a final evolution. I want to see if I can make something happen here. That's not bad. Uh, that's not bad. Ocean planet. Um, so my it, it combos with my living planet. This basically says that I need to have, uh, you know, uh, I I need to have two cards on B, which I do. I need to have the resources on B, which I do, and B needs to be between. Uh, three and five. So is B between three and five right now? B is on three. So I, d I just need some water and I'll be able to get to Ocean Planet. That's a good thing. Okay. So, um, gotta be careful though, because if I play another planet, uh, a card to B that's a hostile, then it will turn B to hostile and negate both of my scoring cards. Boy, that is not a good thing. So I think we're going to keep on focusing on a for the time being okay so i like i really like this i really like having hyper salinity uh played over there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a let me move that over here uh get some earth resource go with that uh all right uh, so nothing really happens pot rolls oh my god <laughs> So the, because there's no matter tokens over here, so the bot is actually going to skip to the um, the ring with the most matter tokens, which is inside. Um, what are you going to do? And uh, I put the token down over here. I should keep better track of the negative score over here. So you got negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So we're looking at minus 74. Okay, and my score, I have 3, 6... Uh, 12 is 18. I should have 18. So I am not looking good, guys. <laughs> but uh, again, so much of the scoring is how well you set up for these cards. So. All right. So I need to take B out of that inner ring, which is. Oh, that'll be a task, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much right now. I think I'm just going to keep on going for high salinity with A. A is going to sweep out. Get that water. Uh, it's going to use water and rock. We're going to pay for that here. And we're going to play that on planet A. All right, so here we go. Uh, hyper salinity is on A right there. Go to put that there. Uh, so A had the uh, the seismic event, which at least sulfur dioxide and salt. <laughs> There's no way in heck anybody is going to live on that planet. Uh, that's pretty terrible. All right, so now I have a choice. Um, I could either go for another 
a little scoring card or I can try to go for maybe a third evolution and score that way. Um, I think I want to go for a third evolution because, I mean, these tokens require me to gather stuff, in which, by the way, um, Hyper Salinity was a, a, a matter attracting kind of gravity things. So I'm going to take a water and put that on B to uh, fulfill Ocean Planet. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm going to take another final evolution. I think that's kind of my only um, way out. Actually, and I, I messed this up. You're supposed to draw two <laughs> and get rid of one. Easy choice right here. We're going to just go for Super Earth. Okay. Super Earth, uh, very, very easy to accomplish. I just need to play another card on B, uh, which will probably be Oceans, if I can uh, swing that one. Uh, and it, it need, the planet needs to be on Ring 5. Uh, good luck to me getting uh, B on ring five. <laughs> okay. Seven. That means all of them move. Whoa, boy. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yep. Uh, and now that kind of signifies the end game. Uh, close to the end game anyway. So this goes all the way down to 60, 66. I have to go. Um, hmm. Yeah, I really have to get going on B. And that means like a, basically a dead turn uh, because there is no matter tokens over here. And I need to get it all the way out to five in order to score it. Ugh, I don't think I'm going to uh, do all that well with that. Whew. I am just going to... I need to do it. You know, this is a, a kind of an empty turn, but I need to do it. And I'm also just going to get rid of oceans uh, and try to get a low evolution that I can maybe score easily. Radiation belts. Oh, that's not that great. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, give me a break, game. Give me a break. Yeah. All right. Uh, there is eight and above. Uh, the game doesn't do anything. So I was actually basically a null turn, which, I, which I'll perfectly take. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I want to keep going, uh, progressing. I have to get B out to ring five. Um, that will take me, I get the rock one over here on B. Uh, I'm going to get rid of radiation belts. Get out of here. Trying it for another low evolution. Man. <laughs> I need to get another card on B. Um, that's that's my real um, priority right there. I need to get another card for B so that I can play all three of these and they will all count for B. Uh, that would help me. Nine, wow, the game is finally giving me a break. Uh, I don't have anything that I can exchange. Uh, I can exchange Ocean Planet, but I, I fulfill the condition for Ocean Planet. Uh, so I might as well just try to fulfill a condition. I, tr I could try Thick Atmosphere, but I've ignored, completely ignored C&D. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mm. All right, so this needs to happen. Uh, I'm gonna sweep B out here. Then I get the water token, that second water token I need for the uh, scoring card. Uh, I cannot discard either of these two cards, which is uh, unfortunate. I'm stuck with them. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get lucky for too much longer. Nope. Uh, five. Oh, look at that. Ring five. <laughs> as much as I've tried to sweep everything out there, no dice. Okay. One, two, three. Lowers the threshold to 60. All right, uh, let's see. So now I need to, you know what? Uh, I mean, I've, I've fulfilled these three. I need to get another card played on B and I don't think I can manage that. I would need to play multiple things. I, I really need to, um, yeah, I need to, I need to pull some magic. <laughs> That's what that needs to happen. I need to pull some a rabbit out of a hat. Uh, so uh, let's try C. I'm going to try to play uh, Thick Atmosphere, get my hand moving. Uh, so here is C. Sorry about that. Uh, hasn't been uh, too useful, but uh, I get to sweep that matter token here. 
uh, that is going to be on C. And let's see what the bot does to me. Seven. It wants to get the game over with. <laughs> That's exactly what it's telling me. Uh, so, wow, I've cleared out that ring over here. So it would go to the next ring with the most tokens, which is over here. And it took me out of six, of course. It took me out of ring five. Ugh. If the ring five is where I need to be in order to satisfy those three scoring conditions. I think I've lost this game anyway, guys. <laughs> I mean, the, the threshold keeps going down, uh, but I think I've basically uh, kind of messed up. So, 52. Hmm. All right. Well, at the very least, I could uh, get a planet, uh, something going on C. So, I'm going to play over here. Uh, so, I get that on C. Uh, C, uh, if you look at that, I get to take these two and satisfy that condition and make C a planet. So I had to move those cards out of the way a little bit, but I can play Thick Atmosphere on C. Make it living. Not that it matters. Sure. All right. So I really need this game to not... Uh, end right now <laughs> and it, it would trigger the final round I do get one more turn uh, if the planets don't move the planets move uh, <laughs> of course they move oh boy so then one two three four look at that so any further tokens are not of use I get to lower the threshold even more down to 48, and the final turn is triggered. Uh, I, I was supposed to pull a low evolution card. I did pull, a, actually, you know what? It's the end of the game. I'm gonna pull a final one. <laughs> uh, a radiation planet between three and five. Maybe I can do that? Hmm, maybe I can do that. Okay. So I was supposed to draw two, uh, but I am actually happy with this one. I think I can, uh, between three and five, oh, wait a minute. Nope, I have nothing between three and five, so I am gonna draw two uh, and discard one. <laughs> no, thank you. So, I mean, the last thing that I can do, I have, I have to move B there in order to satisfy the, the conditions on these two. Okay, so this gets me 24 points. Uh, so, um, okay, uh, the I would spend these two. Okay, uh, if I can focus the camera over there, all the way over on B. Uh, you guys get got a chance to see my drawers a little bit. I'm gonna spend these two tokens right there. Okay. And I am going to satisfy the conditions of these two, which gets me 24 points. Uh, could not satisfy these two, Super Earth. Super Earth would have been really, really nice, but I never got a third card. Uh, so that gets me 30, uh, 40, 48. Forgot exactly where that was, but I, I just came, <laughs> actually it wasn't bad because of the way I planned my soup. I really uh, oriented my game around these uh, end cards and I, I managed to get two of them. If I had gotten the third one, that would have been uh, the win. But that was a full game of Planetarium solo mode. Um, I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, so uh, as a bonus, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, play the run rules run through for for planetarium primordial uh, that's the first expansion for this I would have played with that but it doesn't play well with solo uh, which I have feelings about <laughs> um, because I thought it would be a, an expansion for wonderful players but it really doesn't so but it's still a good expansion I'm gonna show you the rules uh, um, but you know that's that's a bonus uh, the regular playthrough is over so um, on behalf of the One Stop Co-op Shop, thank you so much for watching. 
Uh, once again, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, watch all of our stuff, you know, Twitch and uh, YouTube and Discord. Join our Discord. Uh, we are all over the place. We are Colin, Steve, Mike, Peter, myself. Uh, so happy to be part of the family. Uh, so um, I will meet you guys at the next stop. Later, everybody. All right, welcome to the table uh, for a walkthrough of Planetarium, the Primordial Expansion. Okay, so um, please go ahead and check out my review of Planetarium. Uh, the basic mechanism of the game have not changed that much whatsoever. It, um, the two modules that are included in Primordial basically just kind of add to and wrinkle up uh, what is essentially a very solid core set of mechanisms. Uh, so the first thing you're going to notice is that in a game of Primordial, at least with the Epochs expansion, you do not start with any planet on the board. Instead, uh, the special tokens are provided. These are actually uh, kind of double tokens. They are air and water, uh, and you place them where you would normally place a planet. So uh, in order to get the game started, uh, you will go ahead and choose one of the protoplanet tokens, and you can start anywhere on the map. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, consult your proto-evolution cards. These are new in the expansion. Uh, you're going to check out where you can kind of like strike, get the, get the resources quickly, and get that card played. So I've identified that I can start very quickly right there. So I put the D there, I acquire the matter resource, and I put that on the D space of my personal player board. So same things that, that you do in the basic game on a future turn. You can either move the planet onto a matter token or you can move the matter token onto a planet. So let's say I have done so, move the water token here, move D over here. I now have the resources in order to make D into an icy asteroid. So, uh, so I'm going to place that over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my D token. That is now a planet. However, uh, where I'm stuck with it being a gaseous planet now, I have kind of, you put that token there, and it is now a rocky planet, at least for this game. So it kind of wrinkles up uh, a little bit more strategy to the beginning of the game. So that's not all. Epox also changes the end game. Moving towards the late game of a game of the Epox expansion. Uh, so as you see, the matter token has basically, uh, the matter track has filled up with tokens. Uh, and let's say that um, I have acquired a token, I'm going to play a card, and then I place it on that fast forward spot um, where normally you would just kind of like keep on going, the matter tokens you move a little bit faster around the board. Uh, in the late bombardment phase of the Epox, what you do is you take all of these tokens. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, if I said all of them, I mean all of them. <laughs> You're going to take all these tokens and you're going to reseed the board with all of these tokens. Uh, and not only that, so now uh, just to kind of emphasize, you know, the big theater of what's how happening, you get these comet tokens that are going to appear where the letters are on the uh, where the planets originally started. Uh, those are going to be wild. So you can use those for whatever you want. So uh, it's where in the... In the um, the base game, that end game might be a little bit frustrating because very few tokens are out there. You might not be able to get the card you want. Uh, here, uh, tokens are plenty. <laughs> tokens for everybody. For the second module, which is the Frost Line module, now it adds these fairly cool translucent uh, ice ring tokens, which you are going to put between rows three and four, or uh, I guess um, orbit lines three and four, see so if you can see, uh, now there is a frost line. Um, so how that works is I replaced every single card. Um, so in the base game, you get the cards, you chuck them all, and you only use the cards that have this symbol at the bottom, which is uh, the primordial expansion symbol. Uh, what's that doing there? Get out of here, giant imp. Oh, see, it's so hard to see. <laughs> there it is. Uh, anyway, so you could stay giant impact. 
So then um, what I what how this wrinkles up gameplay a little bit is if you notice this card uh, it now has a precondition of where it can be played. So um, this says that it can only be played within the ring close to the star. If I was playing a ring system, it can only be played outside of the star. So I would be able to play. So you see A is nice and close to the sun. I could play geothermal venting on A, uh, but I would have to. Uh, play ring system on planet D, which is way <laughs> uh, out here. So then uh, what would happen? Let's say I did play Geothermal Venting on A. I would consult the top over here. Uh, that would be uh, a heat token. So I'd put that there. And these are heat tokens. So I would put one heat token along with my ownership token right there. So then uh, on a future turn, another uh, I would be able to put ring system. Let's say I wanted to put it over here. Uh, then it would be over there. However, if I were to play geothermal venting and ring system, so ring system has a whopping four uh, ice tokens that you get. Um, I would put the tokens on here. And it would actually, if there were other, any other um, heated cards over here, they would actually lose this heat token. Heat tokens are a big deal because they're worth two points. Uh, per um, per heat per token on the card at the end of the team, heat tokens and cold tokens. So this would have been a two point play. I would have denied my opponent uh, two points had I done that. You can also deny yourself. <laughs> uh, so you have to be really careful that you are not playing uh, cold tokens where you already have heat cards. Uh, so a couple of other variations in the Frost Line expansion. You can play with what's called a dwarf star. You put the star in the middle and you actually move the Frost Line up. Man, these are really hard to handle. <laughs> you would actually move that up so then the ring is shorter. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can take the big star, look at that, uh, and actually you almost like um, take these out and you can put that there and you would actually move the frost line out. So um, that can definitely uh, change the rhythm of gameplay. Also, you can play with a variant, which is variable star. The star kind of like pulsates, uh, changes between small, middle, and large, depending on if you want to play certain cards or not. So you can kind of reduce your points uh, to make you know, to make the star bigger or smaller in order to satisfy different preconditions on your cards.